Good evening, church. You're all so welcome in the house of the Lord. Please let's stand up and worship Him together. He is risen and He is our King. Amen. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Through the 
of Jesus Christ. No shadow remains for shame to hide. Redemption shone for all to see. Perfection bore our penalty with a grace so glorious. Immortal day, the veil was torn. When mercy dawned a crowd of thorns, as low gave way to liberty, Freedom for humanity with a grace so glorious. And now the glory of our Savior's love surrounding our surrender to know.
is crowned with majesty, with glory, wisdom, and power. All authority in heaven and on earth is his, belongs to him. All power belongs to you, King of kings. All glory belongs to you. We hail you, King. We hail you, Lord of lords. We can't wait for the day when we'll fall on our knees right before you as we dwell in the grace so glorious. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Bless us tonight. Okay, would you turn in your Bibles to the uh, verse that we want to uh, start up on in Luke 15. Here we are in greater grace in the spring of uh, 2023 after having a great Easter season with our play and uh, I, I am thinking, what does God want to do with us this spring in helping reach the city and the area? Uh, so it's in my mind, in my heart, that we would understand a little more about what it is that God wants to do. I want you to see here in this verse in Luke 15. When uh, the prodigal son came home, he made a speech up in his mind. He, ma he made it when he was yet, uh, he, s he decided in 15, 18, I will rise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more, more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Now, uh, notice something here. He is a son, but he says, I'm not worthy to be called your son. And how that happens to Christians, that we are the sons and da daughters of God, the children of God, and yet because of our lifestyle or because of our mistakes and our sins and our Guilt, we, we say, I'm not worthy to be called your son, but I could be your servant. And that's what he said, you know, I could be, I could not live in your house. I can live out in the shed in the backyard or in the barn with your servants where they are sleeping. I could be a servant, but not a son. Uh, so I want you to kind of think about this and understand that we want uh, believers to grow up in the faith and have the assurance that they are the sons and daughters of God. We'll speak about that a little later tonight. So uh, what happens in the story is that he arises, he comes to his father, he starts his speech, but doesn't finish the speech before he's overwhelmed with the father's goodness, and they do the, the ring and the fatted calf, they put a robe on him. In verse 22, the father said to his servants, bring the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. How about it? Yeah, do I get a hallelujah from there, huh? What about it, okay. Hey, wait a minute. He came home. He's my son. He's my son. He's my son. Now, the part I want you to see is the house. Verse 23. And bring, him, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and his family began to be merry. 
Uh, now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. That part I want you to focus on, the house where there is music and dancing, the house where there is grace, the house where the Spirit is, the church that is alive, the house that is like Eurocon in Budapest, where we were with, with your prayers and your love and your, your heart of faith, this, the house, the house of God, the house where there is music and dancing. I want you to be in that house all the time. Not, not necessarily geographically, that is where, where we are tonight, and that is what I, it does mean. But it's more than that. The house you live in when you wake up, the house you live in when you fail, the house you live in when you're discouraged, the house you live in when you discover that ugly stuff that rises up in your heart, you know, the house of God, the house that is filled with music and dancing, the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God, the church of God. So it's my heart, and I know yours too, that in these end days, now was it three years ago we had our Easter service out there? So three years ago, we were in our cars, and we were on a platform that Scotty Dubay and his team built, and it was Easter three years ago today. Does that make sense? He's Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. And, um, uh, and it's already three years later. Already. <laughs> I don't know why we're clapping. I don't know. What? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. All right, so there it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Who did that? The pastors? Okay. What it means to me is that three years goes fast. What it means to me is that I, I think we are in troubled times. We are in the end times. But it's harvest time. I believe people are saying, the world is crazy, where can I go? And we say we have a house where there is music and dancing. Our, the house that God made. The house where you can get healed and be encouraged and be loved. The house where it's called finished work, which we're going to look at tonight a little bit. Finished work, where you can find something that just the gates of hell cannot prevail against. You know, the gates of hell can prevail against a car company. Do I hear an amen? amen. Gates of hell can prevail against an institution, a university, uh, a man. Gates of hell can prevail against um, uh, a little business. The gates of hell can prevail against a family against an individual, the gates of hell can prevail against a government, a country, the gates of hell can take down a civilization, can take down Babylon and Egypt and, and uh, Persia. The gates of hell is powerful, but it cannot take down this house that's filled with music and dancing. The house of God, he cannot take it down. It's God's house. And guess who needs that house? The prodigal son needs it. And just turn to your neighbor and say, I, well, the way you look right now, I think you need that house. Go ahead. Yeah, you need the house. You're not looking too good. <clears throat> okay, uh... Now, in the uh, last thing, uh, Franklin Graham is coming here to Timonium, uh, Maryland, which is not far from here. And we are supportive of that rally, that work, that evangelical campaign. One day, 
and Timonium with Franklin Graham in the afternoon at four o'clock. Uh, as a church, we meet on, at 630, and we're going to have our service that night too. But I want to tell you, if you want to volunteer to work in that uh, outreach, because they have workers and counselors, then you can pray about it and you are free to do it. If you say, I want to be a counselor in that event, then this Saturday morning here at 9 o'clock, there'll be training for churches that are coming in the area to come in, not the churches, but people from the churches to get training to be a counselor at that event. So that is this Saturday morning from 9 to 12, and then the following Sunday in the afternoon, and I think you have to be there at 2 o'clock. And uh, the reason I'm saying it is because we are one team with these people, our sisters and brothers, and we want to see a successful event. And if, uh, but by prayer, let's pray for it. And I believe because we are in the end times and life is troubled, troublesome, that people want to hear a fresh message from the gospel. Uh, so that is, uh, I hope, clear. We will have our outreach meeting this Saturday morning like we normally do. No breakfast, but the outreach meeting will be down at the Fellowship Hall like we do all the time. But if you're going to be a counselor, then you'll be in this room with a couple hundred other believers that are getting training for that event. I hope that's clear. God bless you. I think Pastor Shallow just did my job. I just, that was my announcement, the evangelistic tour. Let's see, do we have any first time visitors by any chance here for the very first time you've never entered? Thank you, thank you so much. Someone over here maybe, thank you. Thank you, we have a gift for you. I think the ushers are on their way. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, we, my name is Avery, um, welcome. Um, we, as Pastor Shallow mentioned, we have the God Loves You Tour uh, coming here this Saturday for uh, uh, the training, if you want to be a part of the team that helps um, witness to those that are coming to this tour. Um, you will have to come to the training. That is a mandatory training you have to go through um, this Saturday at 9 to 12, okay? Also, we have these little tracks that uh, you can hand out. We have plenty of them, so please go to the Welcome Center to uh, hand these out, and please, please, please grab some, grab a handful, hand them out uh, at outreach with your tract, um, get them out the door, you know, driving down Bel Air, just, you know, however you can get them out, just get them out, we don't want any leftovers, okay? And again, that event is happening uh, April 30th, the event um, the, that's going to be at the Maryland State Fairgrounds, that's April 30th, that's a Sunday, and I think it was Sunday evening, as Pastor Scheller mentioned during our service. Um, and then we have a... Um, we have a, oh, baptism happening on the 23rd of April. And if you're interested in being baptized uh, here, uh, please go see the Welcome Center for more information. Uh, we'd love to have you baptized with us. Okay? And then we have a video, I believe, a, a video that we'd love to play right now. All right. Hey, Greater Grace family, we have some exciting news for everyone. Next Sunday at 1245, we're having our Welcome Sunday. All right, so in case you're wondering what is Welcome Sunday, Welcome Sunday is a gathering where we're all going to come together, where you're going to find out who we are as, as a church, some of the basics of our faith, uh, have a question and answer session, where we're going and how you can be a part of it. Uh, there's going to be a tour of the facility where you're going to see all of the wonderful different areas where you can actually plug yourself in as God leads you, of course. Uh, and the best thing is there's going to be a catered lunch, child care will be provided, 
provided so you don't have to worry about your kids. In case you forgot everything that I just said, just go to ggwo.org slash events. We hope to see you there. All right, so we're going to uh, take an offering right now. Uh, you have some envelopes there uh, near your seat if you want to give to the Grace Hour, which is a great podcast covering a lot of amazing topics, and uh, you can uh, listen to that, and uh, we need support for that and also your, your tithes and offerings uh, for uh, this time. So we're going to pray for this right now, really just uh, uh, sense the anointing, uh, the presence of God in our midst tonight, just uh, always those stories. I could use new shoes. I don't want a ring. I, I have one. It tells me who I belong to, and it's kind of bent up for me slamming steering wheels over the years. Uh, and tra tra I have a problem with traffic, uh, but, uh, you know, but I don't need another ring. But, I mean, I guess if I was coming back, a, a ring would really mark, like, sort of, a, you know, I could have, a, uh, I guess, a rededication or return ring. I think I love that point about the sun. That sun and the other sun, they are both sons, and they never stop being sons. That's an amazing thing to think about, you know. And I love what he says to the older son, too. He said, I know you don't want to come in and dance. That's okay. You can stay out here and stew because everything I have is yours. You know, that's the way it is. Everything I have is yours. If you don't want to enjoy it, that's fine. You know, but if you want to come in and dance with your brother who was lost and not, that'd be awesome. You could do that. That'd be great. And uh, so I think, you know, that's what we celebrate. We celebrate the fact that, yeah, there's, 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 uh, there's music here and dancing sometimes. It happens. And we appreciate it. And uh, show your appreciation tonight. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you how to give, what to give. He'll guide you through the scriptures. He'll put it on your heart. Listen to him. And, uh, and uh, really, as the baskets go by, do it. Or do it online, as you can, uh, through the donate button at our website. If you're online watching and you want to support the ministry of Greater Grace, we'll take it. And it goes to the glory of God. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this night, this Wednesday in the middle of the week, when we can uh, really, we just need fresh, a fresh meal. We do. And we're thankful that it's here and that we can receive it. Thank you for providing for our families. Thank you for providing our jobs and the way that you support us in our lives, but also thank you that you move in our hearts that we can give to something like this and watch you work. And ex great expectation of the people we will see and the great reward that is uh, heaven populated with people and souls ready to see a new creation in the future. Thank you, Lord, for all of this. In your name, amen.
Thank you, Julius. It ministered to us, didn't it? It ministered to our hearts. Thank you so much. Turn it with you. Uh, turn with you. Turn with me. <laughs> turn with me to our text for tonight is First Corinthians twelve. And are you ready to listen? Are you you good? Are you comfortable? You want to stand or? I say, no, 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 not, don't do that. Okay, okay. All right, so. <clears throat> yes, Lord. You have something for so many people and unfortunately, some are, some are having a hard time. And we pray for our brothers and sisters that are starting to the walk of faith. May we always, Lord, be aware of the fact that there are people amongst us that are that are struggling and looking and seeking, and we pray they will find God. We pray they will grow, they will find, they will enjoy this new life in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, our opening verse, actually, the one I want you to make note of, we're going to 1 Corinthians 12. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, and knowing no man after the flesh. So this is chapter 5, verse 16. Uh, it's a verse tucked away in our New Testament that really is a very pivotal key verse for what we want to say tonight. Uh, chapter 5, verse 16. Wherefore, Henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Now, the word flesh has a couple meanings. You have the body, and then you have the old sin nature. In either case, we are not focusing on the externals of people's lives. Uh, their uh, status in society, uh, education or lack thereof, their money, their income, their race, their ethnicity, uh, where, what part of the country do they come from, do they have an accent when they talk, and such kind of things, external. Uh, and then regarding our sin nature, we are not studying our sin nature, the sin nature of other people. We are not uh, wanting to know about their past, their sins. Were you ever a mugger, a murderer, a rapist? Who are you? Were you ever a thief? What is your background? Do you have a criminal background? And so on. Um, maybe not. Maybe you are clean and maybe righteous, self-righteous maybe, and so on. Maybe religious or not religious. What kind of person are you? That, that's kind of the context for this verse, that we are not caring about some things that many people care about, that some people are caring about the wrong things. But we have come into our Father's house, and in the house there is music and dancing, finished work teaching, and spiritual life. It says here in verse 16, Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, Yet now, henceforth, and we know him no more. Um, we know he was born in Bethlehem. He grew up in Galilee and many other things we could ask about Jesus in regards to his background and so on. And many of them are important to prove that he is the Messiah. On the other hand, we see him glorified. We know him on a throne we know him in the authority of his words. I don't have to see him. He's been raised. He's at the right hand of the Father. 
Say the word, Lord, and your servant will be healed. Speak to our hearts. We will follow you. Though we don't see you and don't know you after the flesh, but we know you in the spirit. And that is how we have uh, learned, how we have grown up in the faith, by following God in the spirit. So we have three names. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We just celebrated what the Son of God did for us. Easter, we celebrate the resurrection. The, the earthly man became the heavenly man. And the victory of Christ over death and sin and the devil. Now we are talking about the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit has been sent in his place. And in this chapter 12, we see that there are manifestations of the Spirit. Different gifts, manifestations. Verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, one brother or sister. They have a word of wisdom to another word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Spirit has been sent into our hearts. The fruit of the Spirit, the evidence is love, grace. Verse 9. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work that one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. This is an amazing thing that in you and I we have the gifts of the Spirit and the ministry of the Spirit to ourselves personally, deep in our hearts. We are filled with the Spirit and to be filled with the Spirit. And then we have the gifts or the manifestations that we see here, and they are different ones. And I love that, that there are, is diversity and something fresh that comes from the body of Christ by the Spirit of God. Verse uh, 12. Whereas the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. That's the flesh part. Are you a Jew? Are you a Gentile? Well, it's not the primary point. Whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. And that's the drinking of the spirit. In the meeting, the anointing of the spirit in our fellowship being together and drinking the same Spirit. The Spirit of the Father, the Spirit of the Son, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of grace. Remember in the story about the prodigal son, he made a speech because the speech wasn't from the Holy Spirit. What did the Son say? My father has empl employees, and my father has uh, food and a place to live, and I, I am not worthy to be called his son. I will go to my father and see if I can get a job. What spirit was that? There was a spirit of condemnation, of alienation. I'm an orphan. I, I'm not a son. I'm not worthy to be called a son. 
Where is this uh, coming from? This is natural. This is how we think about ourselves. We, we naturally we wake up in the morning. There are times when you say, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm saved. I'm not even, I'm not sure that I am saved. I, um, what I did the other night was so bad. I, I feel so bad about it. I am so guilty. I am not worthy. I need to pay for my sin. Yes, that's what I'll do. I will pay for my sin. I am a guilty man, and I must pay for it, pay for my sin. What spirit is that? That's just natural condemnation. That's being, that's not the spirit of the Father, not the spirit of God. That's my conscience. That's what I discover after I'm a Christian for a while. Maybe there's somebody that might come in uh, from the play, uh, and we heard great stories about this, and, and people that come here maybe stumble into our meeting, and they might say, I'm not worthy to be here. I'm not worthy to be called a child of God. You have no idea what I have done. And, and that's what happens to people. But then here we read, we are drinking the spirit of grace, the spirit of God. We are learning the finished work. We are learning to put on faith. We're learning to come into the house where there is music and dancing. We are learning to say, you know, this is how I feel but the Spirit has been sent into my heart to tell me that I am a child of God. Let's think about this for a minute. Security, love, assurance, that's important for the Christian. I have the assurance. How do you know? I drink the same Spirit in the body, the Spirit of grace. I'm, I'm hearing what God is saying in the word about me, that nothing can separate me from his love. You might say, yeah, but didn't the guy sin the other night? Yes, he did. But what's the message from God to him? The message from God is, and I am for you, I gave my son as a substitute to pay the penalty for your sin. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute, slow down. The penalty for my sin, the sin that I committed the other night, was that sin on Christ or not? What does the Bible say? All our sins, and it means past, present, future, went on Christ. So what does God say? I do not condemn you. No more than that. He says, Romans 8.1, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. There isn't any in that house. There isn't any in that house. When the prodigal son came home and he goes into that house, do you think they were knowing him after the flesh? Do you think they were asking him how he used to live as a prodigal, wasteful person? What kind of life did he live? Were they investigating his sin? No, when he went into that house, there was a ministry. From where? From the Holy Spirit. What's the Holy Spirit say to you? This is Romans chapter 8. It is filled with words that are saying exactly the opposite of what you naturally say to yourself. Naturally, you say to yourself, I don't belong in that house. I shouldn't go in that house. Those people don't like me. Those people don't have anything to do. They, you do not know what I have done the other night. I cannot go into that house. I'm not going into that house. I'm not even, I'm not worthy to be called. I'm not saved. Or I lost my salvation. Or I did something reprehensible, irreparable. Something could never be forgiven me. I've done something so wrong and so wicked and so bad. 
What does God say to the believer? He says, who will lay anything to the charge of God's what? Elect. Does it not say that Christ rose and that he makes intercession for us and there's no condemnation in him? Doesn't it say that it is the spirit of grace that teaches you and guides you in life, guides you in love, guides you in hope, that he groans within us and he prays within us, and that the spirit of God is saying to us constantly, I am for you, not against you. I am for you. I will not forsake you. I am for you. Wow, wait a minute. This is amazing. Yes, it, is. it is. It's the spirit of, of God that wants to say things to us that are shockingly important to us, that we are his children and that he is for us. Now, here's another thing. There are things that you're going to do bad in life. Don't plan on it. It, just, it can happen. Don't give in to it, but it can happen. I remember, uh, well, this morning, Jen Lynch told me a little story about Abraham Lincoln. I want to get it right, okay? Just give me the, oh, it's the, the Abraham Lincoln, 10 years old. His mother was dying of that uh, milk uh, poison disease. The cows ate poison plants, and they got it in their milk and she drank it and died from it. But as she was dying, she said to her little boy, Abraham Lincoln, promise me you will never smoke or drink. And he promised her she died. Later, as president of the United States, there was some kind of a celebration or something and then drinking. And one guy asked him to drink. And Abraham Lincoln said, can you say it again? Abraham Lincoln said, my mother, I made a promise to my mother ten years, when I was 10 years old, I would never smoke and drink. And if you think I should break that promise, then, okay, then let me know. Like, if you think I should break that promise I made to my mother. Is that it? Okay, yeah. And he, what did he say? That, what? What? No, don't break the promise. Don't break the promise. Okay. Why did I bring that up? <laughs> what? Yeah, don't plan on messing up. Yeah, good one. You know, don't plan on it. Plan, on, plan other things. And do the best you can by the grace of God. But it's the Spirit of God that will speak to you when you have a bad time. It's the Spirit of God that will build you up when you have a bad time. It's the Spirit of God that will minister to you when you have a bad time. It's the Spirit of God that will show you your bad motivations. You know, uh, in life, like you, you live usually, like people like us would probably say, well, I haven't, I haven't committed adultery or stolen money or I'm not lying and cheating. I'm generally pre doing pretty good. I'm a pretty good Christian. Then as you grow in your faith, you see life is deeper than that. That you actually have done these things. That there are things in your heart that you don't care about that you should. There is something in your heart that really isn't about the love of God. And when these things kind of occur and come up in your heart, you say, oh, wretched man that I am, who will give me a new life? And the Spirit will give you Romans 8 and speak to you about who you are and counsel you and build you up. And you come to the church and you drink the Spirit of grace, the Spirit of hope, the Spirit of love, the Spirit of God, because Christ paid for our sin so we don't pay for it. That's important. He paid for our sin, so it would be unjust for God to say, Tom Shelley, now you, you got to pay for your sin. And, God, and, and I can counter and say, no, that's unjust, God, because Christ paid for my sin, and he lives. 
and my sins are taken away, and we live with him, and you cannot charge me with that sin. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is Christ that died and was raised again. And the Spirit of God is in the world to minister that to us, to teach it to us, to drive it home, to lead us to be secure, to realize that God is for me and not against me. Now, you might say, well, yeah, I, that's, yeah, you know, you got to get this sinking in, and this is my point tonight. We have new people that are amongst us, and you know what they're looking for? They're not looking for a group of people that know them after the flesh. They're looking for drinking the same spirit. They don't even know what they're looking for. But is there something here that's not in the world? And we say, yeah, it's a house of dancing and singing, a house of grace, a house of faith, a house of God, a song, a new walk, a new way, new friends, new fellowship. Yeah, you came to the right place. Because let's open the Bible and read, and let's listen, and let's grow, and let's live and move with God. Because God is alive, and God is for you. Then they say, yeah, but let's have these stubborn things that don't leave. And we say, you know how those things will leave? God will remove them. God will remove the, the stone. God will remove. God will remove the stubborn thing. God will remove the bad habit. God will remove the swearing and cursing and the negative attitude. God will remove the unbelief. God will remove the problems that we have. God will do it. Let's drink the same spirit. You know, uh, and that's how it goes. Okay, wrapping it up, I want you to notice something here. There are different parts of the body, the hand and the ears, and different members of the body, verse 18. But we're all one body. And sometimes one part of the body has a great privilege, like the eye, what an important part, and then there's, there's the little finger or part of the hand, and, and you might say, you know, the, the one is greater than the other. And it says, no, verse 22, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Feeble body members are necessary. One time I taught about team life from my experience, and I shared it with Pastor Mati and others. They said, on your team, you need a comedian, and on your team, you need a feeble person. And somehow God supplied us with feeble body members. And I, I wouldn't want to mention na names because uh, they, they are worthy of great honor. But let me explain to you what it means. When you have a feeble team member, the weak people in the country that come to your team start to believe that they can be there because they see that a feeble team member can make it on the team. The team is not a school, a, a group of professional people that are polished and have everything right. No, it's made up of body members. And body members have feeble mem are feeble sometimes, like we can be. But this is God. Amen. What's the good thing? We don't know them after the flesh. Well, why are they doing so well? Because they're drinking the same spirit. It's not about your ability in that way. It's about God's plan, God's gifts, and God's spirit in the body. Isn't that good? I think you got it, right? You understand that? That means I belong. I can fit in. I can be here. My weakest day. Why? Cause, because um, the house is not a house for perfect people. It's a house for sinners who found the spirit of God, the grace of God, the ministry of God the way of God, the work of God, 
Yeah. Okay. Um, let's read verse, um, where are we? Verse 23. <clears throat> and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Wow. What do you think about that? Yeah, I like it. Don't you? It's like a family. It's like a family. Probably, and I said recently, somebody in every family, we have some strange uncle or strange aunt, or in every family, got somebody that, you know, they're in like a little different category of the way they are. Maybe their personality or their background or something about them, or they wear, you know, bright orange clothes or... Uh, you know, they have some, something funny or eccentric about them. If somebody's eccentric, that's fine. I don't know them after the flesh, right? If somebody's different, it's okay because we are, the issue is do we drink the same spirit? Do we understand the nature of God? And when we understand the nature of God in the gospel, then the same grace that saved you and builds you up is the same grace that you minister to others. Now, all of this happens to us like by, by the spiritual life in our assembly, but it's worthwhile saying it because I really want our church to grow, and I want it to grow with people that God sends who have the courage to say, I can go and be part of this and drink the Spirit of God and be built up by God, and see God, and have joy, and peace, and then victory in my life over my sin, and my failures, and my problems, and my introspection. And how about this one? People are so self-absorbed that they can't sit in a meeting. All they think about is themselves. They sit in a meeting, and all they can think about is them. You know, did they wear the right clothes? Do they say the right thing? Do they have the right haircut? Does anybody notice them? And all of these kind of things. Well, sisters and brothers, listen. There are people that need help and growing in faith. I say, go to church by faith. Yeah, but I don't know where I get it. Just go by faith, and you'll drink the Spirit of God. And just keep at it, and be patient. And just keep looking for God. You will find him. God is in the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is that house that the prodigal had to go to and find the love of his father. And sit at that table and just say, I know I do not belong here, but I belong here. I know I shouldn't be here, but I am here. That's body life. Like, there are a lot of reasons for us not to be here. We all have a story. But why are you here? Because faith. Because God is real. Because we drink the Spirit. Because it's the grace of God. And we get beyond ourselves. Let's say self-absorption, self-condemnation, self-occupation, self-consciousness. You know, can I come... Am I worthy? And so on. And we just say, yeah, please, everybody, come. God, God has a plan. Let's finish it. It goes like this. Our comely parts have no need, verse 24, but God has tempered the body together. There are plenty around here that have no need. They have become mature fathers in the faith. There are plenty of people around here, young and old, a lot of the older folks especially. We don't really, we don't really have like a lot of needs, like in a way, because we I just, by God's grace, he's helped us a lot and ministered to us. But don't underestimate the fact that God has tempered us together with people that do have needs. And maybe later you will have. Of course we will. I need the body. You know, my loved one passed on. I need the body. You know, there's confusion in my heart. I need the body. I'm a little bit discouraged. 
I need the body. I'm, I'm condemning myself for the sins in my life. I need the body. And forget it. I move on and move with the body of Christ. For they know no man after the flesh. They are glorifying Christ. Jesus is the head of the body. And he's not going to be dwelling on Peter denying him three times. At every meeting, let's make an announcement. Peter denied Jesus three times. The next, Jesus denied, I'm, I'm sorry, Peter denied Jesus three times. And on and on. The body is not stuck in the mind of man and in guilt and fear and self-absorption and self-occupation. The body is moving in faith, and the Spirit is leading us in his plan. I believe that. What is the plan? We're getting prepared to meet Jesus in the air. We're getting prepared to be a light in a dead, bad time in our culture, in our country. We're prepared to stand in the things that we believe. We're prepared to have a message. When it's time to have a message, we have a message. We are prepared by the Spirit of God in the body of Christ that God has tempered together. And some have this gift and some have that. Look at verse 26. We have 25. There should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer. One member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. We can end there, but I want to make an illustration of 26. One member suffers, we feel the suffering. We don't enjoy embarrassing people. We don't enjoy shaming people. We don't enjoy humiliation. We don't enjoy hurting people. We don't enjoy putting people down. No, we don't. We, when somebody's suffering, we come alongside and we are with them in the suffering. We don't not accuse them or blame them like Job's three friends trying to figure out with Job, like, why did this happen to you? We, no, we come alongside by God's grace, the Spirit of God in you and the Spirit of God. But you and I have to learn the mind of the Spirit. We have to learn how the Spirit thinks. We have to learn about what it means to identify we have to learn to love. We have to learn to forgive and come alongside people that are having problems. And then when one member is honored, remember in high school graduation, the valedictorian is announced, high school, they're all sitting there with the gowns and the caps on, and the name is announced, and then there's a slow. <laughs> you know, slow. Do they rejoice that that one student is the smartest, most disciplined, hardest working? Are they rejoicing? They're rejoicing like this, no? <laughs> you know. Is there envy in your heart? Is there jealousy in your heart? Are you comparing in the body of Christ? No, the body of Christ is like in heaven. When somebody is honored by God, you just rejoice in the fact they are being honored by God. They are a great brother, a great sister. You rejoice with them in it. And when one suffers, you suffer with them. That's the mystery of drinking the same spirit and the mystery of Christ making us one body. So um, I'm I'm hoping you can follow this with me. I know you, you are. I think it's pretty clear. You know, I'm just looking forward to the spring and the summer, and I'm looking for people. We have some new people. We had, I think, in one service, 20 new visitors. We had four salvations, and, and we are the body of Christ. We don't have to try hard. We just have to be real and genuine in the spirit of God, a tool of God to help and lead and encourage people in their faith. But they have to learn to hang up the phone, have to learn get off the phone, no pornography, remove yourself from it, get away from those things. 
Got to learn to focus, live by faith. God will change your life. And God will give you a much better life, much better life. Ask the prodigal who was in the house. He's saying, my father, my father has made me. I am his son, and he loves me very much. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is in our heart. We love this place. We love the body of Christ. It's in our hearts. Lord, for all the teachers at GGCA that work so hard in our ministers, the counseling, the podcasts, women's ministry, youth ministry, we, we have a lot in front of us. The play that just happened, the great, the great numbers of people, and the salvations in our services. Thank you, Lord. We have a lot in front of us. Our private life, our little, um, our little devotional place in our house where we kneel before you and are quiet before you and seek you. Lord, we have a lot in our hearts because we have been, we have been faithful in church attendance. We've been faithful in the calling. We've been faithful in doing little things. We have been faithful in love. We are learning, and we want to pass it on. Community group leaders, prayer groups, we want to pass it on with our friends, our circles of friends and people, Lord. We, we are time, it, it's, it's our privilege to live in a dark time where some people are saying, at the end of the driveway, meeting a neighbor, they say, I can't believe what is going on. The world is falling apart. And we say, we know what's going on. Come to the church. You'll hear more about it. We know what's going on. Come to Jesus. We know what's going on. God will tell you what's going on. It's time to get saved. Time to turn to God. Time to repent. Time to trust him with all your heart. It's time to cry out to him and believe in him. Come to him. Father, bless our everyday ministry in, with these precious people we have gathered tonight and those online Precious people, help us, Lord, in these days to show people there is a house, there is a place. Come and learn of Christ. In Christ's name, amen. Church, let's stand up. This is a house of music, amen? Amen. House of joy, house of peace. Um, We don't have our drummer, but we have our hands and we're going to clap, amen? Yes, nice and loud. Drink. 
Yes, we're going to have a wrap uh, out on the patio. It's beautiful out, right? Let's enjoy it. We get to actually go out there and enjoy the, the, sum, the, the summer nights. So, um, I mean, it's spring, of course. But um, that was a great message, wasn't it? What an incredible, I mean, it, wow. That was, a, that was awesome. I spoke to, I feel like, maybe some new believers and then also some of, some, some of us that have been around for a little longer and maybe even, I don't know, I'm not, I haven't been here for longer, longer but maybe I spoke to you too. I don't know. Um, but uh, turn to your neighbor. Tell him you look feeble. You look, uh, you look necessary in the body. <laughs> All right. And let's uh, close in prayer. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Not that feeble. No. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for... Um, the body. Thank you for a place to come, not to feel um, condemned, not condemning ourselves, but um, just feeling the grace and the mercy that you are just freely giving us. Uh, thank you, Father, and just um, help us and teach us in this um, journey as we walk with you and live by faith, make faith decisions to come to church, to um, read our Bible, to learn uh, what Romans chapter 8 says about 
us. And not what we say about us, but what Romans chapter 8, what, what the Word of God says, what you say. Yes, God, teach us. Um, uh, we are welcome here. Uh, whether you're uh, new, whether you're, you're here for two years, two months, or 50 years, um, you are welcome. And you are, there's a place for you. There's a place for you. Just um, teach us that we would feel that and to um, plug ourselves in in any way we can. We need, we need more people. Yes, Lord. Jesus' name, lead us this, uh, this evening. In your name, amen. Again, there's a wrap in the patio. <laughs>